since this is a comparative drama conference, as a playwright, how do you determine the form of your drama? As I look at especially a lot of your early work, um, everything seems to be an experiment in form. You're playing around with different form of drama. Yeah, I mean, I think I, I actually have a pretty strong interest in form. Um, and that each play that I do, um, I, uh, Bill Bowles was saying this earlier, I, f I feel like I need to kind of have a question that I want to answer. Um, I basically want to know vaguely where I'm starting, where I'm ending. And then there's some sort of formal experiment uh, that happens. So uh, even in the more recent plays, I would say, uh, you have with Yellow Face the idea of kind of making a, a, a stage mockumentary or an unreliable memoir, whatever you want to, however you want to look at it, uh, with Chinglish. Uh, trying to in write a play that was about a quarter to a third in Mandarin and be able to use uh, projected titles for the translations the way we would in a movie. And now with Kung Fu, um, seeing if martial arts uh, can be incorporated into a, a play narrative as a sort of danceical. So uh, to me, in order for me to want to do a play, there has to be some kind of formal challenge uh, that I'm taking on and I want to feel, uh, you know, is this possible? Can this be done? Well, could you take us through that process a little? How does, how does a David Henry Wong play begin? How does it begin to take form? Um, well, generally, I think writers are always trolling for ideas. So uh, I'm always aware of, gee, maybe that would be a good story. Um, but the question is, there's a lot of things that could make good stories, but what story is important enough, what story means enough to me, um, such that I want to live with it for three or four or five or seven or however many years it takes to get the thing on. Um, and it's very intuitive. It's the story that makes my heart beat faster. It's the thing that makes me go, um, I really, I, I want to explore this. I'm excited to explore this. Sometimes I compare it to falling in love. Um, like when you first fall in love with someone and you always want to be with that person and when you're not with them, you're thinking about them. Um, that's the thing that, uh, to write about. Uh, the, then it becomes a question of, okay, am I still in love six months later? Um, does it still make my heart beat faster? So there's that test. Um, and then there's the, so that usually leads to a, some sort of question. And M. Butterfly is the most obvious example because most people know it. But in M. Butterfly, you know, it's the story of a French diplomat who falls in love with a Chinese actress and they have an affair for 20 years and she turns out to be A, a spy and B, a man in drag. So the diplomat, and the diplomat claims that he never kn knew the true gender of his lover. So the question there is fairly straightforward. It's the question that everybody asks when they hear the story, which is how could he not know? So there's that element. There's the wanting to have a question to answer. Uh, the second thing is I like to vaguely know where I'm beginning and where I'm ending. So um, sometimes I compare writing a play to taking a road trip. Like I know I'm going to drive from New York to Baltimore, but I don't know how I'm going to get there. And finding the road between the two places is sort of the metaphor for writing the play. And that allows me to, I think, keep some sort of balance between uh, form and content, between uh, impulse and craft, however you want to uh, uh, characterize it. But it allows me to, to stretch this metaphor a little. Um, I'm driving from New York to Baltimore. I have this impulse that I want to stop in Philadelphia. And so I can, I can indulge it. I can go, well, I feel very strongly I should go to Philadelphia. But I know in the back of my head that eventually I have to get to Baltimore. And that allows me to kind of give a certain amount of freedom in the writing process while at the same time uh, having a goal in the back of my head so it doesn't go way off course. Uh, and then the third issue is this, is this thing that you bring up, which is this question of form. Um, what form? is right for this particular story? And then what variation on that form might I want to try in order to do a, a, a formal experiment? And a lot of times that involves modeling plays on other plays. So for each of my plays, I can tell you what play I was kind of ripping off form-wise, you know, what I was trying to uh, model. Uh, in the case of M. Butterfly, 
Uh, it was largely modeled on the Peter Schaffer plays, Equus and Amadeus. The structure is you have uh, your protagonist towards the end of his life, um, and he starts the play, comes to, directly addresses the audience, says, you know, this very strange thing happened to me. You know, I met Mozart. Or, uh, you know, there's this kid who blinded horses. Or, um, you know, I met this, this uh, the perfect woman. Um, so, and then it flashes back, and the older actor plays himself as a younger man in those scenes. Uh, I think the formal kind of variation on that in M. Butterfly is that uh, in the Schaffer plays, the protagonist holds on to the narrative for the whole play. Um, Dysart is, speaks to the audience throughout the whole play. But in M. Butterfly, Gallimard uh, begins by controlling the narrative in act one. In act two, there's sort of a struggle for control over the narrative between Gallimard and Sung, the Chinese spy. And the third act, at least at the beginning, starts with Sung in control of the narrative. So I think that was kind of my variation on that theme. 